Toads, episode 35. Um, yeah, hey, okay, we're on episode 35. <laughs> I thought we were on 40. Jeez. Yeah, no, no, it's not going by that quickly. <laughs> so, um, today is Friday, August 11th. I know this because we have to send out those packages for oh, our swap. fiber share thing. Right. Not fiber swap, not fiber share, but a swap. So um, we need to send those out. Um, so yeah, today is the 11th and we are coming to you from Glassboro, New Jersey. Yeah. Just outside of Philly. Yeah. Look at all that greenery. Yeah. Is that beautiful? Not the jungles of South America, which kind of You like. might think so. It's a, it's not there yet, but I think it's going to be a little bit muggy today. No, humid. no, it was just, I was setting it up and I'm like, I'm looking at the backdrop. And, okay. Looks like we should have like monkeys coming flying in or something. Or you know, a snake. Or an elephant. No. <laughs> an elephant coming That's a little the close trees. to home right now. Um, yeah, no, so we are coming to you from Glassboro. I am Mary Beth. You can find me all over as Mary Beth 494 mostly on Ravelry and Instagram. And I am Helen, and you can find me as Helen HG69. We are sisters, in case you couldn't tell. Um, and we own a store, a business that is Toad Hollow. And you can find that at Toad Hollow NJ. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. yep. I am looking very puffy right now. Very tired, I'm very, very puffy. Squinty. I know. No, we're doing it outside, so we're hoping to get it in before the sun gets too high. I was going to say. Breaches the top of the house. Right. So. so. You might notice some absolute gorgeousness around my neck, which we are going to talk about right now because, good <laughs> lord, it's hot. <laughs> August is not the time to be wearing your FOs. Yeah, no, I finished, I finished something. Let's just start with the <laughs> fact that I finished something. I'm so excited. So I finished an FO. This is my Hohe starting point. And so gorgeous. It is, it has not been blocked yet, but it's really quite, it's so much bigger than I thought it would be just to begin with. But, oh my word. I will let you just enjoy that for a moment. Bask in the glow. Yes. That was Mary Beth's starting point. Let's just bask in the glow that Mary Beth actually finished it, okay? <laughs> so this is my, my starting point. Um, I actually did a page on this for Ravelry. I am trying to do that. And I updated it with all the amounts that I actually use. Oh, wow. Because I went just over half on one of them, I believe the orange. And then everything else was about three quarters of a skein. I have about a quarter of a skein left of everything okay. else. Okay, okay. So I have quite a bit left. I am a tighter knitter, so that... Um, my stitches are a little bit tighter, but I actually kind of like you that. You would think then that you would use more yarn, not less. I don't know. I'm not going to try and, no. you know, work it out. I very, very it's much gorgeous. enjoyed knitting this one because I adore the colors. I really, really love the colors. Um, and that is all on my Ravelry page as well because I don't have any of the tags with me right now. I know that this is Winnie Sanderson by Legacy Fiber Arts. This is Budgie by Chelsea um, Chelsea Lux. This is, I think, Something Sweet by Chelsea Lux. Uh, the red... Oh, I don't know. I know the red orange is, is Sherbet. I know that the orange is called Sherbet. But these two, the orange and the red, came in swap packages, and I believe they may both be British. Don't. However, we'll Are put they it. BFL, do you know? Oh God, I don't know. They're not as soft to the hand. The red isn't. I as noticed that as I was yeah. knitting it. Um, Your well, is, is, is neither. Winnie Sanderson. I mean, it's perfectly fine. It's just not as. I know Winnie has got the cashmere. It's got so. cashmere, and I am not sure. Budgie may have cashmere too. Yeah, Budgie feels kind of cashmereish. And did the something sweet might have cashmere? No, that. No? It wasn't an MCM. Okay. It's got a bit of a halo, though. I know, so I'm wondering if maybe it does. Yeah. So I'm wondering if so maybe one that's of the reasons... what it is. It's just that you're... you're three of them have cashmere, cashmere in them. Yeah. So I know that the... the Again, I was thinking, perfectly Ooh. fine. Just it's it's a little rougher on the hands. Right. But the colors. 
gorgeous. This raspberry color, I just adore. And you all know me with my orange <laughs> and my, my fall colors. So a friend of mine said that this looked like I was planting the vegetable garden because it's all the colors of the vegetables. So um, I sent her a picture of it and said that the garden is starting to produce. <laughs> but I really, look. really, really love it. Such a pretty, pretty uh, shawl. I, we as have I was a saying, blocking party soon because we've got shawls oh lined up God. that need to be blocked. But I was saying, I really enjoyed knitting it. By the time I got to the end, I was ready to be done. And it was a to... big project. It was a fun project, but as done. with any big project, I mean, even the snow melt, which I really, really enjoyed. Right. I, by the time I was done. Yeah, I'm still working on that one. I was ready to be done. I said to Helen the other day, I am going to work on my snow melt because this is my, my month for finishing off big projects. Okay. And then I cast on something. <laughs> instead you know so okay um so yes that is my finished object that's the ep epic fo so shall we just continue with whips and get and do, do the, the admin stuff and everything yeah okay true all right so go for it because you, you have two i only have one you have to get the jar to go. oh okay all right uh my first whip is a very very old whip but i was taking uh, pictures of bags and I use up my knitting as a prop and they were sock totes so I needed to find some socks and obviously I'm totally prepared here okay so I pulled out my solar socks and I'm like, you know I should really work on socks again so these are my solar socks and I have done approximately three rows since pulling my, actually since where the, where the progress keeper is um, and I'm doing them two at a time and I got a couple rows done I was really excited to do them and then I realized that I am just about ready to put my heel in um, and I have to look up how to do two at a time heels so that stalled me again so they <laughs> have gone back the solar socks it's a free pattern by Ravelry Gilly Wigs it's a fun pattern. Um, solar, so. relating to energy derived from the sun's rays, like walking on sunshine. And the yarn I was using, God, it's been so long. It's a Welsh yarn that I got in a swap. And I've lost the tag. Hopefully I put it on my Ravelry page wow. before I lost the tag. The colors are beautiful. Yeah, they are. And it's knitting up so It nicely. is. It's so pretty. And uh, my cuffs and my uh, toes are marionated um, marionettes that I am using, little, her little minis. So what I'm going to do is when I hit the toes, uh, this sock will get a purple toe and this sock will get a green toe. What about heels? Are you doing alter, uh, I don't. Heels? I don't think so because I'm not sure. Oh, freeze. I know. I know it's really quite nice. I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough okay um, to do toes and heels mm -hmm. so pretty purple like it's gorgeous so Marion has the most gorgeous colors we were um, watching the yarn hoarder um, and we all know, you know she just she knits socks in her sleep um, so I, and I was watching and I'm like god I want to start knitting my socks again. I, know. I think I have also three because pairs of socks at least you know, on needles summer is just is Coming, coming, yeah. you know, you're starting to think of fall and you know, actually putting something on your feet again. So, yeah, you like, would not know it, but bare feet, but all right. around. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, my feet do not like to be encased in anything, but when it comes time, socks. Yeah, I gotta get going because yeah. we want lots and lots of socks. Right. Oh my god. So, just drop everything, forget time everything. Time to else. knit socks. It's time sure. to knit socks. I just have to figure out how to do the heels, and then my these are perfect car knitting yeah um just you know uh i have may... five minutes so i'm gonna knit something right you may hear the dog soon because they just both went Charging. chasing <laughs> off the the um deck so we have two dogs if you're new to the podcast their names are spike and drusilla and uh sometimes you hear them in the background don't forget that uh, one thank you there. so we shall see next time. I will move my progress keeper while you show your whip and okay. we'll see how far I get. So I, um, last time Helen showed her blanket and I was so jealous of her blanket. I really, really loved it with the colors and everything. And I said that I really wanted to cast on my own. 
Um, and I went with something a little bit different, not exactly hers. Oh, there go my glasses. All right, so this is the Rainbow Sampler Blanket by Kristen, Kirsten Ballerin. It is a free pattern on Ravelry, and it is basically um, every row or two rows, you're changing stitches and you're changing colors so that you're learning all the different crochet uh, stitches at the same time. I have gotten, so the tables have turned, and now I'm completely jealous. Oh. And I want to knit this blanket. I want right. to stop knitting my blanket. So this is where this I am. I am using peaches and cream cotton yarn, 100% cotton yarn. I picked out my colors. These are my, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. These are my eight colors, plus my border color is this. So you've Tannish actually color. used all the colors now? The blue is the last one. Cool. So then I'll just start reusing different ones. Gorgeous. I believe she used, when she made hers, I believe she used like a hundred different colors. I don't have a hundred different colors, so we're going to go with eight. But I have done bobbles. These are very new to me. Um, I believe these are just double crochets. These are called granny clusters. So that was new to me. I had to look that up. This is the wave, which is basically just single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, triple crochet, and then going back down again. And then the second row, you do the opposite, the opposite so that they mesh together. That is so cool. It is. It's really very, very interesting. The only problem I had was I kept forgetting where I was, and you would think that you'd be able to figure it out, but looking at it from one angle, it's like, oh yeah, of course. Um, from another angle, when you're, you know, three quarters of the way asleep because it's 10 o'clock at night, could not figure it out. Um, so I had to pull out a couple of those rows and keep doing them. But, um, and now I am on a bobble row, and... I actually like this bobble better than mine. It's bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet. So every other stitch is a bobble. That's using that's up a, a lot, lot of yarn. I was going to say, that's a lot of crochet. I have four rows of these. <laughs> <laughs> I have 240 stitches. About, we're going to say 240-ish, because I haven't counted recently. I know I cast on 240, but, you know, when you get to Things the happened, end, well, know. no, when you get to the end, I'm never sure where the actual end is. So that, do I, is this actually a stitch well, you I go mean, into? Look, look at how straight you're, you're, you're straight. I'm pretty so straight, right? You're pretty good. On that end. And that end's pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'm pretty good. Um, Cause I usually take it over as far as I possibly can. And then sometimes I think, am I going into a stitch from the road before? I'm not even sure. But this is what basically all I want to work on. It's just, even though uh, we were talking about it last night, the sugars and cream, it's a very, it's a fine yarn. Yes. No, it's not a fine yarn. Okay. It's perfectly serviceable right. cotton yarn. Um, it's very splitty. Oh my goodness. It's very heavy. Um, and when it gets and when it, and hot, and muggy, hot and muggy, it sticks to the, it really sticks to the crochet hook. Um, because I was, I was crocheting, uh, I'll show you in a minute, uh, with, you know, fine yarn <laughs> really good yarn last night and it's just flying off the the hook and then you get to this and it's like oh, slogging through so the next cotton i love cotton blankets that's the thing you so know you put cotton, up with it yeah and the next cotton i'd like to try uh the nipix cotton right because people have said that it's a little bit better um and maybe not so difficult to work with. It's just, I, I, and I feel it in my hand working through the cotton. Oh my goodness. So yes, my hand, um, my ring finger has a tendency to lock every now and then. So I have to, I do little exercises and things for it to keep it from getting too bad. But um, we're going to have a house full end, of such pretty blankets. Right, well, see the end result with the cotton blanket yeah. is so good. Even Yours this Yours is cotton. not as heavy as mine. Well, mine isn't as big as yours either. No, I know, but I'm just feeling like this piece, and if I were holding like this piece of mine, and mine, I don't know. Maybe it's because you're doing it, you're tighter at it. I don't know. 
Well, if I were tight, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems I'm not sure. Lighter. Um, we shall see. Because you're using the same type of yarn. It's exactly the same yarn. You're using peaches and cream, right? Yeah. So, all right. Well, anyway, I started it, uh, speaking of um, keeping up the Ravelry pages yesterday. I went on and created a God, I project yeah. for this, a project page for this. And I put in all the colors of yarn. What can you do? Except for this one, because I couldn't figure out what the tan one is. I have to figure that one out, because I threw away the band for it. I have it on a cone rather than the little... Um, but um balls of yarn i got a cone because i knew i was going to be using more of it so um but i really love this it looks so pretty it really does and when you look at the yarn together hmm? i said hold on we pause this regular scheduled program for my bit to hold up your yarn well okay actually we're going to pause for a phone call here we go ready one two three look at this wait you're missing one where's the other one the blue the green you got to get it so that they all show my assistant is very bad at this now she's dropped it on the ground fire if me I had, if i had eight arms i'd be fine okay see look at that how beautiful is that together it's gorgeous there is a spider web Floating by my head. Where's the spider? I don't know. That's the problem. Okay, so beautiful yarn. It's going to be spectacular. And a little bit of tan in between each row or each set of stitches to just offset the colors. And I will get that all worked out later. Just jam it back in. I'm gonna wind, 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 wind. Really, jam it back in. I'm gonna I'm wind it side. into a ball. <laughs> All right, so that's my rainbow sampler blanket. I love it. It's just Absolutely all about the blanket it. right now. No, it's 95 degrees. Right. And what am I doing? I'm making a blanket. And I'm gonna be wearing a blanket to rhyme back because I'm not gonna have any of this little sweater. <sighs> well, I have a plan for my acquisition. But I'll fill you in on that later. Excuse me, I'm going out of uh, focus for a minute. So my uh, other whip that I have been working on, I've been working on my blanket, but you can't really, I'm not going to show it because it's all the same. Because you're not allowed to see it. Right. <laughs> and I've been working on my fairy hill shawl, but again, can't see that either. <laughs> you can't really see the progress. Um, so the one you can see a lot of progress because this is my lost in time oh. shawl. Also just because this is my lost in time shawl oh. and it is oh my god so beautiful this is just so gorgeous okay so um, this pull is it back like oh yeah. see there that's good because then you can really see all this is where beautiful. i was last time we podcast so i've done all this <sighs> since then um okay now i'm gonna bring it up close so you can see the colors i love everything about this shawl i love the look of it i love the colors i chose it is so Okay, so talking about the cotton, this is so light. <laughs> it's just, I mean, this it's is like everything away. <laughs> the lilies and cream is not. Um, and I, I had a couple questions from our last podcast. Uh, somebody thought I had done that this was worsted weight. This is actually in fingering weight yarn. So, uh, and it was designed for fingering weight, so you can do it in fingering weight. Um, and a lot of people asked me if. Uh, since they, they're not proficient crocheters, if I thought they could do it. Yes. Most definitely yes, because when I started here, I knew how to do a single, a double, and a triple crochet. And a half double. Don't and forget the half double. Do not, not undersell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and let's, you know, I did know how to chain. Um, so I just love the look of the shawl, and I decided that when I hit something I didn't know how to do, I would Google it because, you know, Google and YouTube show me how to do everything. And that is how I have gotten through this. And I am thrilled with the outcome and I will toot my own horn because it looks like I know what I'm doing. Oh yeah. Um, so this is the beauty this of the pattern. looks like an, an old fashioned, I don't yeah. want to say, okay, so I'm going to it's say an old fashioned, fashioned circus yeah. because, and I don't mean circus like the circus colors or circus like it's 
a laughing type of thing or anything like that. There was a look to the old-fashioned circuses. It's like a had, Victorian. I mean, very. A lot of people have called it very Victorian. Um, I think of it more as like a boho, vintagey. Right. But it, it just it reminds me, and I think it's because of the way the blues come down through the greens. Yeah. You know, so it's. It's like the bunting of the circus type of thing. I don't know what it is. There is something just that just screams old-fashioned vintage circus, but in a really good way. Right. Um, it's the kind of things where you go into an antique store and start drooling when you see something right, from right. there type of thing. So it is just yeah, I spectacular. Just... So I figure I, I have already done one extra set of the it's a 12 row pattern so I've already done an extra one beyond what the pattern called for and she said that you would probably want to do more um, to make it bigger and I think I may so I've got about another five rows to do and then I think I'm gonna put the border on okay how big is the border I think the border's like I mean it's five like five a or six wide rows. Border? it's like five or six yeah six, well here wait I have the but wait, you could even tell people who did it. It's Miho Crochet. So if you go to MihoCrochet.com, all of her patterns are free. She has, oh, she's got some of the most gorgeous patterns. Um, bear with me. The pattern has the instructions and then they have pictures for pretty much every row, uh, right? Yeah, so she shows you, um, and she'll tell you in the pattern when you get to a particularly, you know, more difficult stitch. She'll say, okay, go look at the picture. So she'll show you the picture so that after you're done, you go look at the picture and it goes, oh, cool. That looks exactly like it That's should. really good because yeah. I was thinking, I've been going back and forth between pictures on Ravelry on my blanket to see if I'm doing it right. Right. Because since I'm not used to it. Um, and I'm not proficient in it. I'm not sure if I'm mine is coming out the way it's supposed to. Right. And having a picture for each step is really, I know it takes up a lot of paper and it's a lot of time because we know from taking pictures of things, it takes time to do this. It, do, it's, it, it's, it does. It's not just, um, but it's so helpful. Oh no, I, I, I strongly recommend, I cannot believe these are free. Just knowing the amount of time that goes into it. Right. Okay. Are you missing the last page? I might be. Uh, <laughs> the edge is three rows. Okay. So it's not that big an edge. Um, but I can choose to, if I want. Well, you'll see when you get there. Yeah. Um, I'll, finish I'll, this I'll see, set. I mean, right now, it'll work. The thing is, it's not like a regular shawl where you want to um, bunch it up. Bunch it up. You know, like, I mean, that is very pretty. Yes, it is. So I make it, maybe I'll go another one. The problem is it's a triangle, and I find triangles very difficult to wear. Okay. I find just shawls. because I don't like the long bib and the regular um, basis difficult to wear just because I'm not used to it. But you know, there are people that um, just put it on in drapes perfectly. When you watch the grocery girls, I think Tracy takes a long time and she, right. she has to, she's more like us. Jody's like, she grabs it and she's. And it looks like she styled it for five hours. Yeah. I sit in front of a mirror. And then, you know, I move and it falls off. <laughs> kind of just got that done. Um, excuse me, I just dropped everything. But, uh, so, I'm not sure whether I'll go another. Do you have enough not. yarn to? Oh, I have plenty of yarn. Because I also don't like wearing shawls necessarily like that I think that's very I think it depends on I mean if I'm wearing a nice lace skirt you know I'm wearing a airy fairy dress right and I'm out you know and I need just need something over my shoulders that's great or if you're wearing I... like black like a little black dress type of thing and you throw that on because right. that is your statement piece why but, are you staring over my shoulder? <laughs> it's the biggest blue jay just flew into a tree. Um, when was the last time? Yeah. I, I don't... We will see. However, who knows? 
Now that we've got all these beautiful shawls, maybe yeah. we'll actually start wearing them. I mean, them. if I make it really big, then it could work more like this. So, and just think, if nothing else hides this. Well, that's what we're you know. <laughs> I will be wearing it over my face. I have to tell you, when we first started podcasting, if I could have started podcasting... <laughs> Um, what we have learned. However, what it's I really think gorgeous. is, it may hang on a hang uh, something in my on my wall in my room. Then I may just stare at my beauty, beautiful shawl. You could do that too. So. That is my lost in time shawl. It is beautiful. It really, is. Really, really beautiful. Really, really love it. So, okay. Shall we talk about what we're drinking? Oh yes, that's mm. here comes the hawk. Oh he must have something, he's really low. Might get nature in the wrong. Yeah. We are drinking smoothies. This is what our life has become. Smoothies. I am drinking kale. And spinach. Let's just let that sink in drink. And Everybody bananas. Who knows me? I am drinking kale. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. So we got together with our family and two of my brothers have started drinking smoothies. And they're looking pretty good. I was going to say, one of them in particular, there was a significant difference from the couple weeks we'd seen him. So um, we started talking to them about it and they're talking about how much more energy they have and they're feeling better. So being the lemmings that we are, we <laughs> decided, what the hell, we'll try it. We've got a blender. We need to get better health or Yeah. With moving and everything. And running around after nephews, you right. realize and how not in shape you are. Also, we just got in the habit again of, you know, oh, we're, we're constantly in the car and on the move right. and on the go. Let's just grab something. What's the easiest thing in the world? We don't want to wait. Go to McDonald's. This is not good. No. So, this kind of leads into our other thing that we were talking about where I want to cook our way through a cookbook. Right. And we have decided, well, I I'll have right decided. Well, you do this, I'll get the, okay. the other thing. We, I have Excuse decided me. that I am going to cook my way through the Barefoot Contessa's Back to Basics. So, I started by picking out a, pa a, a recipe I was going to make um, tomato and goat cheese tartlets, which looked really, really beautifully good. By the time I was finished, here's hers. Okay, that's <laughs> hers. By the time I was done, I put it in the oven for, it was supposed to go for 25 to 35 minutes. Mine went in for three minutes and was completely black on top because our every... oven I had a problem with it. Was going and as Helen is saying from the outskirts, every fire alarm in the house was going off and we had four animals that basically, you know when the cat gets startled and its tail goes out to like here and all the hair is standing up on end? Yeah, four of them. Because we have two cats, two dogs, and everybody was freaking out. So we um, talked to our landlord who is a wonderful lady and she came over and said, yeah, we're going to replace the stove. So she and her brother came over to replace the stove. They pulled it out and unplugged it, and evidently the plug was pretty much shot. I mean, what are you pointing to? Oh, what is it? It's a little baby of the one that was on the gutter. Okay, so we have bugs all around <laughs> us right now. <laughs> um, so we have a brand new stove now. The second time we did it, it was amazing. Oh my God. How much difference it was. <laughs> They're really, really good. They're really, really good. So it is the tomato and goat cheese tartlet from Ina Garten. You can probably find it online. Divine. Food Network. Absolutely divine. <coughs> then the second one I did was pasta with pecorino and pepper. The only thing that we did was we threw some sausage in there too. Um, oh yeah. Because we threw in a little bit of sausage. It was really, really good. That was really a um, spur of the moment thing. Right. We hadn't really planned that. It was like, oh, we're doing pasta and sausage. Oh, let's look up something in here. Right. So, two recipes down. I'm not sure how many more to go, <laughs> but two recipes down. Both of them, high rate. Yes. Yeah. High, high rate. And, and uh, I think of Ina Garten as being more of a detailed, um, not difficult, but more time-consuming recipes. These did, did well, not Well, that's seem... the whole thing. It's yeah. back to basics so that you're doing 
basic kick, uh, cooking from simple ingredients. Yeah. And just really, really, really good food. Yeah. So I recommend this. Yum. Yeah. And you can find out, as I said, you can find pretty much all the recipes on either the Food Network or online somewhere. Right. If you don't want to invest in the book, but the book has great pictures and um, interesting. Her backstory is very, very interesting. Oh, well, she's so, a fascinating. Yeah. Really, really interesting. So, um, that is what we are doing. And drinking smoothies. And drinking smoothies. Ugh, can't believe it. Drinking smoothies. I do feel better. Yeah. So that's kind of um, part of the day, a life in the day of the toad. Yeah. yeah. A day in the life of a toad. Oh my God, I totally butchered that, didn't I? Anyway. Toad day life. Yeah, there you go. Um, what else has been going on in our lives? We found a snake skin. That was fun. Yeah. Um, I got this picture <laughs> from that thing time to move <laughs> now Helen has been the one that has been on the fence about our place our new place um, just because of all the things that we inherited with the house and um, bugs and things like that you know I have been the one that has been championing championing the house and staying here because I love the peace and quiet I love that there's not a lot of noise I love that um, we've got all this green around us I mean, look at this that's I my have, backyard. Yeah. I, I, I love the fact that we have a deer and a couple of rabbits and a groundhog and a turtle that and, all come uh, and visit. What? A family of 12 wild turkeys? Right. We saw them the other day. Parents and nine babies walking through. <laughs> you know, it's just marching through the side yard. I love it. I really do. The songbirds that we're getting, we're starting to get some really yeah. pretty songbirds. It's fun. I don't do snakes. Nope. I do not. No nope, snakes. Nope, nope, no, no. I just no, 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 no. And, I and there was a lot of skin that we yeah. left behind. So I think what Helen's going to put in a picture. I think we figured out that it's a black snake, which is not going to be harmful to humans, other than scaring the living crap out of me. But and yeah, no, I, they're they're good at eating vermin. I just would like him to stay, you know. As far away from the house as possible. You can come and at, Madeline, I mean, can I tell you? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much for putting that thought in right. my head because she left a comment that said, "Oh, he won't be harmful to, to humans, but um, make sure you have a firm foundation because you might find him living in the winter, this basement over the winter." Yeah. Nope. He gets the house. <laughs> he will leave. I was gonna say, with the divorce, the snake gets the house, <laughs> all my belongings, and I will maybe be... the cats. <laughs> We may even leave on the cat. If the cats the don't get in their carriers fast enough, that's it. They're done. They're done. snake they're bait. Done. Sorry, um, done. The dogs and I are, they're, we're gone. I will be, gone. I will be down on Delcy waiting for you guys to come pick me up. <laughs> oh man, yeah, no, we just, no, 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 no. Nah. And now every time Madeline, I go to the basement, I'm like, <laughs> she's looking all looking over. around. I mean, she takes a flashlight <laughs> down with her to make sure there's nothing. The, ba the basement is already burned because of the fleas. Now, thanks. No. <laughs> you would think that the least he could do is eat all the fleet. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, come on, start earning your keep here. So, um, what else have we been doing? We went on an adventure the other day. Yes. We went on a drive and we wound up in Millville. I make this sound like, you know, we just happened upon this lovely right. little town, Millville. We went and searched online for yeah. a local yarn store. <laughs> We're tired of not having a local yarn store nearby. So, um, we went to find one and we found Fiber Arts Cafe in Millville. Yeah. This is a great town. I mean, it's a really great town. It is so arty. Yeah. And um, the stores, what did they call it? It's a village. They call it the village. A village of little bungalows, maybe 500 square feet each. I mean, tiny, really, really <coughs> small. Excuse me. <coughs> Stop it. Do you want to go inside? Um, is Drew inside? Yeah. Okay. Um, very, very small, but they're all just kind of in a, they're all attached in a, in a little, small little village. Yeah, they make like a, um, a cul-de-sac. Yeah. A mini cul-de-sac. And they're like the little beach huts. Yeah. All the quiet, because the air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> 
Our air conditioner is a big thing outside, and it makes a lot. Of, wow, it makes a lot of noise. Yeah, it doesn't really does. it? Anyway, um, little they're the little beach huts that um, they used to have in the beach towns, and they're painted fun colors, and they all have paintings. It's on very them, vibrant. On them. Yeah, it's so cool. And one of them is the Fiber Arts Cafe, which is a little yarn store. So we met Carol, who is the owner. And um, it was we had a lovely chat. Really, was yeah. such a nice time talking to her. But she w was really intrigued by our skirts because we're doing the no pants revolution. And she said, "Would you be willing to make me a skirt?" And we said, "Sure, why not? We make yeah. skirts for ourselves. Why not?" She said, "I'll barter you in yarn." And we said, "Done," because <laughs> yeah. So this is what we got. Well, this is what I got. Because I got four skeins. It's Cascade 220. And it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Right. I don't think they give, I guess Cascade does. 220 yards. Okay. I'm talking. Thank you very much. I'm trying to do the color. I don't think they do color names. I think they do numbers instead. But. It is color number 8892. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? I am thinking that I may be doing a poncho out of this to wear to Rhinebeck. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. That would look pretty, right? Wrap it around. Oh my God, don't wrap it around your neck. Um, but I thought this would be a really pretty poncho. And I think it's enough. Are you going to do my poncho? You're going to do my poncho? I don't know. I had another poncho in mind, but I could do that if you really wanted. No, I don't think no. we have to wear the same poncho. You can, of course. We also got the Interweave, the most recent edition of Interweave. And I, because I want to make that poncho. It's a beautiful poncho. Because I hate wearing winter coats. And last winter I was going to make a poncho. I think we've talked about that before on the yeah. podcast, didn't we? We wear sweaters. We make heavy duty sweaters and wear them all winter long. <gasps> See, now I should not be doing this while we're talking on the podcast because that's just rude. But would you like to show them what you just showed me so that they can. I'm not sure how well it's going to come out. I think it's going to come out. Yeah, there you go. See, isn't that a beautiful sweater? That's really pretty. Anyway, lots of great patterns in there. So I got four skeins of yarn to start something a poncho a sweater I'm not sure it's worsted weight so it will be something for the winter um I'm trying to find the pattern and I'm figuring it could be you know my start towards a Rhinebeck um garment because <laughs> um I want to have something to wear for Rhinebeck my god will you stop I'm just getting I'm losing words <laughs> It's like I can't even talk anymore. I'm just getting totally tied up in these uh, pictures. So, page right, she's she's gonna. Okay, so there's the poncho. Look at that. Ah, I think that's gonna take more than four skeins of yarn. Oh, I think definitely. I think that's any sweater's gonna take more than four a skeins blanket. Of yarn. Okay, so. We're getting there. Talk amongst yourselves. How much does it call for? Okay, yeah. 31 skates. 31 skates. 50 gram. 30 31 gram. 51 skates. 50 grams. Worsted? Uh, no, I'm thinking probably DK because it's 123 yards for a 50 gram ball. Okay, so, well, this is 220. For 100 grams. Yeah, so that would work. Yeah. I mean, you just do a gauge. and You may have to go up or down a, a needle size. It's a poncho. Who does right. gauge for a poncho? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's going to fit across the shoulders. Look at that poncho. Anyway. I'm going to make something out of this. It may Obviously, be the I haven't taken this out of the bag yet. And I yeah. should take it out and look at it. Would you like to show what else we got? For when we drive across the country, this takes you across the country, every single state, and all the yarn stores in that state. So I know she said that they have it listed alphabetically, but do they have it listed by state too? It's alphabetically by state. Oh, okay. Okay. So. All right then. 
So when we um, decide that we're going to get in the car and just drive and well, go to where we're going. Um, wherever, we'll figure out see. what we need. When you come to visit us in New Jersey, those are all your yarn stores. And then we realize that Ravelry will do this for us for free. <laughs> but Ravelry will not be in the car with us right. and the book will be. So, no. hey, Look at all these yarn stores there. and needle stores. And fa it's, it's yarn and fabric. Fiber and fabric mania. So look at all that in New Jersey. That is and that is one thing we are not missing. Um, New yeah. Jersey has yarn and fabric. Yeah. It's a good thing. So, yeah. So it's alphabetical by s city. Uh, yeah, once you get to the state, it's alphabetical by city. And then okay. you can just um, yeah. go and find it. Very cool. Very cool. We checked. Um, Chelsea is in here, but she's still in her old location. So. But Chelsea Yarns is in there. Yeah. We haven't been to Chelsea for a while. We keep up, keep up with them because I don't know whether you know it or not, but Christina and Miriam from Chelsea Yarns have started a podcast called the Chelsea Pearls. Yes, go and check them out. Yeah, you can see part of the yarn store behind them, and they talk about yarn that's in the store and what they're making and that sort of thing. And it's it's kind of nice to um, see familiar faces that we don't get to see anymore. Yeah. One of the really crappy things about moving was moving so far away. We moved kind of far away, and we haven't made it back for knit night yet. We're thinking of it, but it just it hasn't happened. So um, everybody's someday. on vacation, and yeah. So that's why we're trying to find a yarn store with a knit night around us because we miss the camaraderie of doing knit nights. Yeah. We really enjoy that. Okay. Um, Which pick from our jar? Oh, right. So one of the other things we did, we talked about doing was we've started putting ideas in a jar and each week we, or each podcast, we are going to pick something from the jar and then we have to do it. And... We will report back to you the next podcast. Yes. We Who's each gonna pick? pick? We each pick first. No, we no, each we pick do, one. Do we each pick one or yeah. do we um, no, pick we each just pick one. one? Each pick. Okay. That way All nobody right. can get blamed. Mary, yours is in there. So if we get it, we're going to put it back. But Mary asked us to put in that um, we will be having lunch with her next April somewhere around our house. So um, that's in there. We're just going to take from that cryptic clue that you were coming to New Jersey. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Ready? I'm going to close my eyes and pick one. All right. You go first. Okay. Let me preface this Is by this saying... Is this yours or mine? No, it's mine. Okay. Um, well, it's one that we did together. Okay. When I was 10, we drove... My family what drove are you doing on... making granola? <laughs> my family drove on vacation... We hit Canada. We went out to Wisconsin to visit my par my dad's family. By Canada, we did Niagara Falls. Yeah. Um, and then we drove to Indiana to see my mother's ancestor's place. And then we drove back. I get carsick. Really badly carsick. I think I threw up in every single state that Multiple we Multiple times. <laughs> and Canada. And one of the things that we had, because it was easy to do, was granola. <laughs> And this also, was a, this was plums a, and bananas. A very long time ago. Yes. So it's like old granola bars. Right, okay. I have not been able to eat granola since then. <laughs> I have to make granola bars. <laughs> In our new healthier living style, I have to make granola bars because we're talking about eating things, snacky things that are you know better for us than uh, M&M's. You know, not M&M's. So, <laughs> I will be making granola bars. All right. I do I get to make the the ones that the um? Oh, mine's so fun. Do I um? It makes up for the granola. <laughs> do I get to make the ones that the grocery girls were so, talking so about? So you from... get to buy the book. <laughs> yeah. Well, not mine. Not so much that, but um, I, I know there's peanut butter. And oh, oh, no, in yeah. there. oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So make granola bars. We will be making granola bars and keeping track of it, and we will let you know how it goes. All right. What's yours? Mine is, we have to go to grounds for sculpture. See, I put in the good stuff. But you put the granola in. Well, that was because we, we, we both decided. <laughs> grounds for sculpture is a, um, it's in Hamilton, New Jersey. And I'm 
it's on an old estate. Gardens. But, uh, as far it's, as you it's can It's gardens, see. and they have sculptures all, and a lot of it is based around the wind and the willows. Right. So and Raddy's, they have Raddy's Cafe. Raddy's Cafe, and uh, there's topiary that's all done up in the animals, so that I'm very excited about. We have been talking so. about doing this forever, and for those of you that were part of our yarn club, you know that our last destination was Toad Hall yeah. from the wind and the willows. Um, Toad Hollow comes from a basis, a kind of a meld of Toad Hall. Hall and some other things. So um, it's something that we have been talking about and talking about and talking about. And I thought, you know what? I'm putting it in the jar because mm. we're going to make ourselves so, go. Now so we have to do it. We're going to go see Ground The jar culture. says so. Yep. All right. And it's for the podcast. <laughs> all right. If that's what's going to get us there, I'll go with it. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Those are our picks. Check back next time to see what we did. Also, we Instagram. Did we will. Uh, Yes. As we do things, we will post on Instagram. We put it up on Instagram. Okay. Um, let me just check our notes quickly to see what we have left. All right. Did that. Okay. We still have to do that. Do that. That. Okay. We're moving right along. All right. Um, where are we going to be? I think our only next thing that we have scheduled is the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival in September and September 9th and 10th at the Hunterton County Fairgrounds in New Jersey we have started our bag for that yeah I know that there are an awful lot of people that start prepping for this a little bit before you know five weeks before the show but this it worked best under pressure yeah so um we plan to have between 400 and 500 bags whether that actually happens, because considering how we stayed to last week's schedule, I'm not sure. <laughs> We're aiming high, um, but we will have all sorts of all different size bags. Excuse me, uh, notions bags, um, the little triangle bags, going all the way up to our blanket size tote bags and sweater yep. bags. We're gonna have everything in between. Um, we may have some yarn. I don't know how much yarn we're going to have just because we're going to be surrounded by yarn people. So we figure, you know what, we're going in with bags because right. not that many people make bags and people need project bags, right? So uh, we will have some. One of the things we are going to be doing and having there is a Halloween kit. Yeah. Because just like last year, we're doing a Halloween kit. Only this year, I think we're doing all of it ourselves. Yeah. So um, we're going to be getting the fabric and dyeing the yarn to go with it. It has not been listed yet because we can't wrap our minds around the fact that we have Halloween. to start be thinking about Halloween. We should really be thinking about you know Easter. I know, but, uh, I know. The retail just throws yeah. you off completely. Um, but um, next weekish, we should have yeah, something. We should have it up and ready to go. Yep. Um, It'll be a skinny yarn and a bag. Right, just like last year. Yep. And uh, we will be announcing that on Instagram and maybe Ravelry on Facebook, yeah. Facebook and we'll, and and we'll put like it in that. the Ravelry page because uh, the advent calendar we're going to put in Ravelry yeah um, so also we actually started doing a newsletter again I think we've done two weeks in a row I think we did high five all right we got we two use weeks MailChimp done. yeah they high five us when we send <laughs> anyway you always know when the the Newsletter's about to go out because one of us are going to high five. But besides the fact we got two weeks in a row, let's high five ourselves. Um, so if you are on our mailing list, our email list, you will be getting a notification through that too. Yeah. We're going to send it out all over the waves. Any way we can get it out. But we have started doing some other Halloween things and putting them in the store. And we're slowly but surely building up our Halloween stock. Yep. So we've got a couple of Halloween pillows in there and we're going to be adding as we get them done. Right? Yep. Yep. All right. You mentioned the advent calendar. That is something that we do have listed already. Um, we had uh, struggled with whether we would do the advent calendar. Right. Excuse me. Just because there are an because awful lot of people that a lot do. Of, a lot of dyers are doing it this year. Um, but uh, we spoke to some people. Thank, uh, thank you very much for your input. Yeah, and we sent out feelers to see if people would be interested or not. Um, they were very interested. So we listed, the first one we listed is the traditional advent calendar. You get uh, 24 20 gram mini skeins with a 100 gram skein uh, to open on the last day, the 25th day. And then we have also added the option of a limited release uh, Christmas Eve bag that will go with it. Um, 
That will come. We're going to make you an advent calendar. Right. It's going to all come day, as an advent calendar each day. You pick. You pick out um, your mini. For your the mini. Day. Right. Um, so there's that one. And the pre-orders are up on the store for all of the the advent stuff. So, right. Um, come and then grab it while you can. Then we decided maybe people would like to do it, but they don't want to commit to 24 days. Right. So then we did the 12 days of Christmas, which are 12 mini skeins. So it's just the 12 mini skeins with the option of with a bag, bag as well. Yep. Um, and then... For so, those who don't celebrate. Right. We thought, okay, what about people who don't celebrate uh, Christmas? But Hanukkah. Right. So. And who celebrate Hanukkah. So we have the eight nights of Hanukkah, if you would like to do that. And that's eight mini skeins for Hanukkah. Um, and then we were explaining this to my mother about it. And she said, well, what if you don't use mini skeins? Right. Because she doesn't, she doesn't use mini skeins. And she said, what if somebody wants to do it and they don't do mini skeins? And we thought, that is a very good point. Because right. there are people who don't do things with minis. They like big things of wool. And we realized that 25 um, full skeins of wool might be a little excessive. A little pricey. <laughs> so what we've done is... It's a very nice Christmas present to yourself. It is. It is. Get your significant other. You know, hey, yeah. that's what I want. Um, so in, instead, we decided we would do the four um, weeks of Advent. Yeah. So there is a full skein for each of the four weeks of Advent, and then the fifth skein for Christmas. And again, you can choose the option of um, the back. The back. So um, we thought all those are listed Toad Hollow and Jay, and you can do that. Excuse now, me. Where wait. You go? Nope. Wait. No, no, I'm did you know? Okay. Did you know that in 1908, Gerhard, Gerhard Lang created the first advent calendar? I did not. No. It was a cardboard square with 24 pictures that you could glue on. Okay. He called it the Munich calendar. Nobody wanted to buy a Munich calendar, so his company Munich? went out of business. Okay. He's from Germany. Did you know? <laughs> Okay. Um, I didn't know any of it. This was happening, but okay. In I did not come prepared with my did you know facts. 1946, Richard Selmar, you also from Germany. Podcast, I'm going to be like, everything you said, did you know? Okay. You're going to have to know what I said first. Um, in 1946, Richard Selmar focused on the U.S. market. He also was from Germany, and he got the U.S. patent, and he still, his company still sells over a million advent calendars throughout the world. Wow. Yeah. Did you know? <laughs> Cadbury produced the first chocolate advent calendar in 1958. Okay, the chocolate calendars we got growing up were not we're Cadbury. We're not Cadbury. <laughs> However, I'm pretty sure my mother and, and my grandmother were not by paying Cadbury prices no, either, you no. know? So we actually uh, last year bought two calendars and sent them down to my nephews, the chocolate cal advent calendars, because... Those were not Cadbury either. Every child should Needs have... a chocolate advent calendar. And a chocolate advent calendar. Last one. Okay. Did you know... <laughs> The largest advent calendar is in Gengenbach, Germany, where their town hall faces the square, and they realized it has 24 windows that face oh. the square. So they turn it into an enormous advent calendar, and it starts. they start prepping it in November, and on December 1st, they unveil one window after another until on Christmas That's all so of them cool. and other towns in Germany have gotten so jealous of them <laughs> that they now have started their own and now there's a competition to see who has the best that's awesome that is that's really like, really credit cool. to Germans yeah so did you know see fun facts about advent calendars cool yeah also come by your advent calendar yeah we also um one other thing life of the toad we finally made it back to trivia. Yes, we did. We missed trivia for three weeks due to work and Keep talking. Um, visits with the nephews and things like that. Drew still is inside, desperate to come out because she went in the last time. Um, and everybody else is outside and she just realized this. <laughs> but uh, we finally made it back to trivia. And we had such a good time playing, right? We had a really, really good time. Um, they had the first round, it was 14 questions about Game of Thrones. It's like, do you know Game of Thrones? I'm like, oh, yes, I do. And we got That's... two wrong. We got, okay. I was okay. very disappointed with us. Seriously? <laughs> you have to really, really be on top of things and know what the relationship between Daenerys and Jon Snow is. Because 
it could be different things. And if yeah. you don't know who the father is exactly, it's kind of confusing. Also, um, there was one quote that we got wrong. Yeah. I, I said it, it was, was it one was... person. Helen said it was the right person. I said, no, he hadn't arrived yet. And I was wrong. So if you get a trivia question about something about a leader not killing her favorite subjects <laughs> or something like that, it's Tyrion Lannister that said it. Not Jorah Mormont, who I thought it was. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, no, it was, it was a really... We yeah, had it was so much fun. fun. We had one of the rounds... It was all sports. Was sports, that's right. We got 9 out of 12 right for that. That was awesome. Because Helen's like... No. I think it was 11 out of 16. I think that's what it was. No? Yeah, because... No, 12 no, out of 16? I don't think we got 5 wrong. Yeah, there were 16 because it was 4 per, right, per four, sport. Right, per sport. And Helen's like, we're gonna we're gonna do so badly on this, and we didn't because we know more than we think we did. Yeah, you know, and you I can mean, make you some Jerry Rice out of you. Jerry Rice, yeah. the the <laughs> the dancing because he was so good at dancing right. on Dancing with the Stars. Well, it was just so. a football player. Okay, sorry, camera ran out of phone. Uh, camera ran out of phone. Yeah, that or you know, makes sense. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Don't even know. Don't even. My don't. stroke brain. Yeah. Uh, the it's all that green. <laughs> it's just eating away your brain. Um, the, the camera ran out of memory and we had to uh, okay. restart. But, um, so we did with the sports one, the one that we did very badly at, which. You would have thought we would have done better. You had to name the characters from movies. You got extra points if you could name the movies. We got all the movies right. We just didn't get any. Yeah. We got two of the characters right. And one was a gimme because I knew it was Prince something from coming to America. So I put Prince and he gave me the points. Did he really? Yeah. Well, yeah. that was generous. I know, really, it was. It was very generous. Um, and I did no share from Clueless. <laughs> but um, lots of movies we'd seen just have no idea what the people's names are. Yeah, try remembering. Somebody, I mean, and they weren't main character. Uh, well, share was a main character, but. Uh, well, no, I mean the, the guy from The Breakfast Club. I don't know what any of their names yeah. were. There was the jock and the nerd and the goth and yeah, you know I don't, it's just I don't I, 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 I don't retain that. No. So. Anyway. We need my brother. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. It was. We really had a good time. The food was good and it was just it was just a really, really nice night. So brought our knitting and it was fun. Yeah. yeah. We we finally brought our knitting to it, so we're good. Yeah. We are just taking over that trivia. Watch out. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we are to, what are we reading and watching? I'm reading the same thing I was reading last time. I'm not getting very far. Do you like it still? I do, I do. I just, I need more reading time. Yeah. So, um. I have, I actually finished that one and I have started a new book and I am looking in my notes because I know that the name of the book is called The Necklace, but I'm getting the title, the author. And it's Claire McMillan is the, the author. It's the, called The Necklace and it's about a woman who is a little bit estranged from her extended family and her great aunt dies and she is named the executor of the will partially because she's a lawyer and partially because she is a little bit on the outside so that she can be impartial impartial also the only thing that she inherits is a necklace and there's the whole story behind the necklace it goes back and forth between the 20s where you're uh, learning about the person who actually bought the necklace and then present day for oh, this cool. woman who's inheriting it and finding out exactly what this necklace is. She thought it was fake and it turns out it's a huge sapphire that probably was stolen from India. So, okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's a lot of fun. It's, um, it's just pure fun. You know, there's nothing um, heavy duty about it fun read so the necklace by Claire McMillan oh. and watching watching the only thing we uh, knew we've been watching uh, we went back to season two of Outlander having seen Opera Joe talk about Outlander and put up her video from Comic-Con Comic when the Outlander boys came up to her like, yeah. Oh, yeah maybe we should start watching <laughs> Outlander again. So we kind of lost it partially through season two, but we yeah. have picked it back up again, and um, it's, we're, we're, we're whipping right back through in, it. And um, 
I'm actually contemplating picking up the third book and trying to get it done before the season starts. Yeah. We both read the first book. I know I made it partially through the second book. I'm not sure how far I took it. And yeah, both in the book and um, the show. The whole time in Paris, I just had no interest in she, she lost me completely. Yeah. So, um, Take me back I dropped to Scotland. the book. Yeah. So now I'm... I'm contemplating picking up the book, the second book, the third book. The third book. The third book. Yeah. No, it's 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 a good show. It really is. Yeah. And we are up to date on Game of Thrones. And for any of you that yeah. watched Game of Thrones and saw the last battle scene, you know exactly what we mean. Yeah. That was... I looked at Mary Beth at the end of the month. I'm pretty sure I haven't breathed in like 10 minutes. <laughs> it was a really, really good episode. Yeah. So... All right, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I Spike is telling are... us that it's time to go in. Yeah. Oh, plus the sun is just starting to. Uh... Monarch butterfly just went by. <laughs> Fall is coming. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, anyway, sun's hitting us. Sun's about to overheat the phone. All signs point towards finishing this up and finishing up all the other stuff. Because but... you know I've got bags to make for <laughs> you yeah. shape a wall. And finishing a skirt, so we got we got stuff to do. We do. We got to plan a trip to the sculpture garden. Right. Well, that's Very a good cool. thing. Make some all right. bars. Yeah, that too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you have a wonderful week yes. or two. I enjoy think. enjoy the rest of your summer. Yeah. Enjoy the weather. Yeah. I mean, last week was spectacular. Oh, it really was here. It was so gorgeous yeah. here in New Jersey. It Low was slightly 80s. cooler. Slight, no humidity. Yeah, we had the windows wide open. It was great. Yeah. Really, really great. Um, for those of you who do follow us on Instagram, you will have seen that we were down on Long Beach Island on Monday when it was pouring yeah. rain and it's gorgeous. Perfect. That is a place to work. Yes. So, okay. Go forth and knit. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye.